Nutrient planning management and closed periods has helped turn what has often been thought of as a waste material into a valuable resource for our crops. The industry has also been working on ensuring that we understand the value of the nutrients within these materials and how they can be utilised in crop growth. Chris Coxon is the Technical Extension Officer with Dairyco. Chris, what figures should producers be thinking of in terms of nutrients? We've got to remember that there's a very high nutrient value in slurries and manures, uh, especially for the major nutrients of nitrogen, uh, phosphate and potash. So really this is what we need to be looking at in terms of the availability. We need to think of our slurry tanker uh, similar to our fertiliser spreader in terms of getting the application rates right, uh, the spread widths right uh, and making sure that the machine's in good order generally. When we're looking at um, in terms of standard analysis, uh, these are available from the fertiliser manual uh, RB209. And if we're looking at standard slurry, uh, we usually refer to it as like a 6% slurry. And this is because the slurry excretia coming out of a cow is usually around about 10 or 12% dry matter. And then for the majority of farms, we're adding about 50% of water in terms of washing down or rainwater. Uh, so this then brings it down to our 6% slurry. And if we're thinking about what's in it um, in terms of nutrients, uh, if we just take nitrogen, uh, it's got about 2.6 kilos per metre cubed. And this is around about 220 gallons. So although it doesn't sound a lot in principle, if we have a standard application of say 40 metre cubed a hectare, so it's three and a half thousand gallons an acre. Uh, this will give you over 100 kilos of nitrogen in terms of total nitrogen value. So there's some pretty good nitrogen value there. I know we need to balance it with our crops. Does the value of slurry vary from farm to farm? So should slurry analysis be considered? Well, the biggest thing we need to think about is dry matter of slurry. Okay, there's very standard analysis, uh, but in terms of um, analysis, slurry usually goes from around about 2% dry matter through six and then through to around about 8% dry matter, which is very thick. Uh, if you're thinking of this, 2% dry matter slurry would be very thin soup. Okay, 6% would be like a thick soup um, to stir up. And then if you've got a bucket of it and stuck a cane, you could probably stand the cane upright in like an 8 to 10% slurry. I would say analysis is a very good idea, uh, but it's like taking a silage analysis. You need to have a very thoroughly mixed product. Um, ideally, you want to take some subsamples from each load of the tanker, uh, then mix it all up at the end of the day and, and send it off for analysis uh, and go from there. But really, dry matter is the key to assessing the nutrient value. And if you think in terms of ballpark figures, 2% uh, slurry will have half the nutrients of a 6% slurry, so it's really, really important. Is the timing of the application a factor in the amount of available nutrients? Yes, it is. And it's particularly important for nitrogen. Uh, so total nitrogen availability to the crop um, is around about 50% of the total nitrogen there. Uh, and how much we capture depends not only on the time of year, but the method of application. So we're trying to get as close as we can to that 50%. So if we're incorporating the slurry quite rapidly or using techniques such as uh, injection, then uh, we can get up to around about 45% availability, bearing in mind that some will be lost uh, in terms of ammonia or through leaching. But uh, on the other hand, if we're using a splash plate technique, especially on a very hot day, then availability can be as low as sort of 5 to 10% of the available nitrogen. So there's a huge range there. And if we think of our standard application of 100 kilos of nitrogen, then we could be looking at a 30 to 40 kilos difference. So it's very, very important. So if we're looking at a rule of thumb, especially with a splash plate applicator in the spring, availability is around about 35%. So as a good rule of thumb, we can use uh, one kilogram of available nitrogen per metre cubed uh, of slurry ap applied. There are now several different methods of application. So what should farmers consider before trying them on their farm? Well, I urge people to try different types of application. Uh, splash plate applicators work very well uh, and are very effective at, uh, at moving the slurry across the farm. Uh, and availability is generally good. But if we want to increase that availability, then we need to be looking to different methods of application, such as rapidly incorporating within six hours, um, or other method, methods such as band spreading, so we can use a trailing hose system in arable crops, or, or trailing shoe in grassland systems, right through to injecting the slurry under the surface. So if we just consider band spreading, um, in terms of um, comparison to splash plate application, yes, it is slightly a higher capital cost, Okay, there's more wearing parts to be, uh, to be looked at. But in terms of the, the advantages of it, um, we do get a more reliable nitrogen capture. Uh, and where it's uh, usually part, parting the crop uh, and direct, applying it directly to the soil, uh, you get very minimal crop contamination. So it's a very good system to look at. Uh, not quite so well suited for the very thick slurries because uh, it may dry out in the bands, uh, but very worthwhile having a look at. If we move on to injection, again, an even higher capital cost, uh, a lot more moving parts, uh, the types of equipment are usually heavier, so this can lead to compaction problems on some tankers. Uh, but again, it, it may be uh, something to look at on your farm. Um, 
The only downside potentially is uh, it's not suited to all soil types, uh, for example clay, uh, where the slots may dry out, uh, bake out uh, and actually have some crop damage uh, on the back of it. So Chris, how does this all relate to nutrient planning? Well basically supplying the correct nutrients to the crops is really important obviously for crop growth. But to get the best monetary value out of uh, these slurries and manures, we have to apply them at the correct rates so that all the nutrients are used up uh, and balance this properly with appropriate fertilisers. So if we think the average uh, fertiliser is worth about £3 a metre cubed, then uh, if we are applying this in, in a very good rate uh, across all our crops across the farm, uh, we can have quite a good monetary value in terms of what it's worth. This also allows you to give a good plan across the farm, uh, of or, you know, all the slurry across the farm, enables it to spread pretty much far and wide across the farm, uh, f further perhaps than you would normally plan to. Uh, it also keeps you within the legal le legislation of 250 kilos of nitrogen uh, per hectare. Uh, and basically, it's, you know, it's a really good way of uh, getting those nutrients across the farm. And if you use our Dairy Co Slurry Wizard tool um, in terms of the amount of slurry storage on the farm, you'll have a pretty good idea of the slurry storage, you, slurry, uh, slurry production that you've got on your farm. There are lots of different resources on the market to help you with nutrient planning and field records, alongside the Dairy Co publications, which should give you a better understanding into the effective, positive use of slurries.